in a world where you have to do a lot of schmoozing and a lot of getting to put yourself out there and extroversion, I had to grow outside of myself for a long time. And even I'm still not done going outside of myself, but it's a lot of you have to meet people, you have to do collaborations, you have to put so much energy into giving out energy and sometimes it can be a little draining. Ike Slimster is a Nigerian born and raised young man who basically moved to America in his late teens and blossomed into this artist slash comedian slash creative slash wild card who just delves into anything that motivates his creativity and basically sparks his mind and his imagination to go wherever he wants to go. Six foot five, 422 pounds of man. I have tons of stories from my childhood and tons of memories that actually, you know, make me miss Nigeria so much and basically fuels my creativity and fuels my personality and my vivaciousness and eccentricity that basically makes me like have all these characters and craziness in my mind. It's hard to really define what my style is like. I have heard a lot of people say it's Afrofuturism though, because it definitely, um, it definitely looks like images of a time that is beyond here and now. Could be the past, could be the future, but it's definitely not now. But my style has been very um, flexible, to be honest, it's because most of the time I painted because I just wanted to paint. So if I had a vision or an idea of what I wanted things to look like, I would go for it. No matter how sci-fi or weird or, or just off grid, it seemed, I would just feel like this was what I wanted to see. I would say what makes my work um, a little different than the norm would be my use of color. I don't think I use colors based on color theory classes or, or the proper procedure of how you use color. I do gradients and highlights and contrasts in ways that I feel would basically like force a certain emotion that would make you feel like, why did I not think about that combination of colors or, or what would it be like to be inside that painting? People are used to paintings being on a canvas, something they can feel. They believe paintings come in layers and they have texture. So digital painting makes humans feel a certain level of disconnect. Sometimes they love it when they first see it, but when they're told about the nature of digital painting, they have a certain disconnect. I try to create work anywhere I can, on anything that I can, on my computer, on my phone. I use the stylus on my phone and sometimes I create art on the go. I could sketch, I could warp, I could play around with 3D design and experiment with it. But I try to infuse uh, technology in my paintings to, to make things a little more different. To be honest, I haven't even began to scratch the surface of where I want to go as far as infusing technology with my paintings. I picked up art or comedy or anything creative because I was curious and I wanted to dabble. And once I dabbled and it worked out and people said, hey, this is great, more people should hear this, you should put this out, or hey, this is great, more people should see this, you should put this out. I also had the confusion of, so so wh where is my place when these people see these things? Am I being some sort of therapy to them? Am I being some sort of an idol to them? Am I being all of that simultaneously? I didn't know. So I really don't know as far as purpose, but from the very few experiences that I've had, I've noticed that there are many other kids and there are many other people just like myself who have these visions and have these ideas and have these feelings that I feel and these things that I think that do not have the, I guess, energy or, or the inspiration or, or the motivation to put themselves out there. And when I do receive feedback from these people, I feel like, hey, I guess this is it. I guess this is the purpose. I guess reminding them that there is someone out there that's doing it and it's, it's kind of working for them and they are alive, you know? They are speaking their mind, they're expressing their truth, and they're honestly just getting the best out of life for it. I want to go to a place where I do not have to take time away from creating 
and take all the energy that I could put into my work and put into my ventures and put into anything I do creatively with my mind. The hope is that I can work hard enough or preach my sermon or get my word out as much as possible and get to a point where it just speaks for itself. The art just speaks for itself and I don't have to, uh, how do I say it? Yeah, become a circus act. I don't have to do as much to get the point across, which would definitely be the dream that anyone can have their art understood without having to use words. I think you start nearing the age where you're gonna give it all up and you know it's, everyone's getting married everyone's having kids and you're like why am I still here why am I still doing this thing and you consider walking out you consider like you know just taking a rain check and going the normal route but I honestly can't picture myself doing anything else with my life. It's a love-hate relationship, but in the end, it's ultimately a masochistic romance. And 